Welcome to this everything you need to know about vampire survivors video where I will talk about plenty of tips, tricks, game mechanics and other things. I try to keep the video below surface level so not just obvious things that you are guaranteed to discover while playing but rather things that if you don't know about them you will not know about them or there is a chance that you miss them. However I will still include a lot of things that I would consider basic like what is for example a projectile in the game where you could run the tests to see what the results are but now you have them in the video here and you don't have to do this. You may notice that this video is incredibly long and there's even a first part that you can watch after this video if you want to. So I would highly appreciate it if you could give it a like just to help it out perform a little bit better on YouTube. Note that for some of these I will refer you to the wiki simply because this is very time sensitive and in 3, 4, 5 months it may look very different but the wiki always gets updated so you will have the newest information. Whenever you start the game you are in the main menu and there is one tab that a lot of people tend to ignore though it's one of the most important tabs that exist, which is the unlock tab. This lists all the unlocks that you can have in this game, except for a few that are hidden to begin with but will later be shown. So I highly advise that you always check this out because this answers 95% of your questions on how to do certain things. Then there's also the power up menu and here you can buy everything to power up every single character and it doesn't matter in which order you buy them but keep in mind that whenever you buy something the costs go equally up so while it doesn't matter that you for example buy stuff in a certain order it will become more expensive so you are advised to go for the things that you value the most first. Note that the moment you refund you get all of your money back and nothing is lost so you're free to just buy the cheap things you can afford first and when you then have more gold you can just refund and buy better things like for example a mount. There are currently 41 playable characters in Vampire Survivors of which 25 are normal characters and 16 are secret characters. As of right now you have 5 playable stages in the game as well as 2 bonus stages, 4 challenge stages and 1 special stage. There's one more that is hidden that you unlock with Moon Golo, but I'll not spoil more about it so just discover it for yourself. For the stage progression it is advised that instead of first finishing Mad Forest you go over to Inlaid Library and finish this one while also farming up gold to become stronger since Inlaid Library is an easier stage. There are some waves that will be a lot more difficult further down the line but there are a ton of farm waves that allow you to get all the weapons that you need. For the rest of the stages the progression is fine where you don't have to switch it up. Each of them have their own difficult part. On the Dairy Blend there are some waves that are incredibly difficult to deal with especially the final one. On Gallo Tower it's all in all that you get less experience across the board and on Capella this is kind of combined where you have more difficult waves and less experience. Talking about all the stages the number one advice that I want to give you is stop running instead start killing. Most people that start out playing the game panic quite easily especially in situations where this is not required and they are super safe so I advise you that you get used to how much HP the enemies have, how much damage your weapons deal and how they work because else you just run away you don't become stronger and once the next wave spawns that is more powerful you will die regardless. Every single stage has one or even more relics on them but the one that you should focus on is the one on the Dairy Blend called Milky Way Map. Whenever you pause the game you'll have a map that shows you all the relics, all the items on the stages etc and then you can go back to the mad forest to the library and unlock all the relics where some of them are just cosmetics and don't help you all too much while others will give you insane power increases. One of those relics is the so called random matsu which unlocks the arcana in this game. Arcana are quite wild with some of them having very wonky effects but all in all they are super powerful and you want to make sure that you collect all of them. Once you have the map unlocked you'll realize that every single stage has item pickups on them and these are incredibly powerful since when you pick them up they don't replace one of those that you own and instead they are additional ones. Now if you pick them up while you have 5 passive weapons then the next one that you pick up will fill out the 6 slot so you want to avoid that and instead you want to pick them up when you have already 6 passive items which is the maximum in this game and then they will be added as 7th, 8th, 9th one. And one very important note, let's say for example you're stuck in a run, you need to leave or you just wanted to unlock something very quickly. 
All you have to do is hit escape, go to options and click on quit. You still receive all the gold and the unlocks that you earned in this run. And this is how most people do it whenever there's a new update. They just check out in the unlock tab what they need, they quickly unlock it and then leave the game after 2 or 3 minutes. Now I will talk about game mechanics and the first one being chest evolutions. In general, if a boss spawned at 10 minutes or later, they will always be able to evolve your weapons if you fulfill the criteria. However, this has nothing to do with when you pick up the chest, this is determined in the code what each chest will contain, as well as odds of how likely they are to be basic chests, triple chests and penta chests. There are three exceptions for the stages, the first one being Mad Forest, the very first chest that you can obtain there at minute one from the bat is an evolution chest however you only have a 30 percent chance to get this one this chance is increased with the more luck you have then we have the dairy blend where every single chest can evolve that means all of those prior to 10 minutes and on capella it's the same story where every single chest can evolve now one thing you may notice while playing is that level 20 and level 40 take an incredibly long time to level up this has to do with the formula in the game that calculates how much experience you need to level up and this this is important for you because once you reach level 20 and 40 you know there will be a large time gap until you get more weapons so make sure that you got the most important things prior to that because it will take you quite some time until you reach the next level. While playing the game you may come across red gems. Red gems simply indicate that there's a lot of experience in this gem but there's also a different game mechanic that is very important here. If there are roughly 400 to 500 gems on the screen then to prevent lag the game starts accumulating accumulating all the experience in one single gem, which is the furthest one away from you. Usually if you walk into one of the four corners, you may find it. The way the game does it is that it first hoovers up all the experience that is currently still on the stage with a certain distance to you, and then in one of the four corners, because this is, you know, the furthest away from you, it will accumulate one red gem, and that is the reason why sometimes when you pick up this red gem, you level up 5, 6, 20, 40 times, while in other cases, for example, when a boss dies and you pick up the red gem, it's a little bit more than usual, but not that much, and the reason is that the bosses give a set amount of XP, while this accumulation red gem that I'm talking about can in theory have an endless amount depending on how long you let it accumulate. But the important note is that no no experience in this game is ever lost. And now let's talk about spawn mechanics in the game. If you take roughly 50% of your screen and go out to the left side, top side, right side, pretty much all around you, this is where the enemies will spawn. And this is also where if the enemies leave that area, they will despawn. The only exception are bosses, where if they leave this area, they will instead teleport to another side and then walk in again. However, normal enemies, if they leave this area, as I said, they will despawn and all the damage that you have done to them is wasted. One thing you should probably focus on more than you do right now is breaking the breakables on the stages. They can either be the braziers or the candelabras and you can get coins out of them, gold bags of which there are two different ones, a rosary that kills all the enemies, a so called NFT where you breathe fire and it deals a lot of damage, an Oriologion, which allows you to freeze all the enemies, a vacuum to hoover up all the experience on the entire stage, Floor chickens which heal you, a gilded clover which triggers a gold fever to earn a ton of money, and a little clover which increases your luck by 10%. Some of the maps have altered drops, so for example on the bone zone you can only receive the gold coins and the gold bags, the smaller ones, which is actually very beneficial if you want to have a gold run. Now I will talk about weapons, but I will reference a lot towards the wiki that you go there and check it out, because otherwise I'll just talk for 50 minutes about all the weapons in the game and exactly how they work. In general, the main thing you have to understand is that there are multiple weapon types. And I'm not talking about something that is in the code, where one is this type and the other one is that type, but what I'm rather talking about is that some weapons are meant for the early game. So for example, Garlic and Song of Mana are amazing to early on kill the enemies and quickly level up so you can overpower them and not get overpowered instead. Then there are weapons like King Bible that are incredibly protective, however they don't have a lot of damage, so once you face enemies that don't receive knockback, you have a difficult time to deal with them, but aside from this they are amazing to keep you alive 
alive. Certain weapons are limited to the screen like the Rune Tracer which just bounces within the border of your screen and other weapons they will leave your screen and travel into the spawn zone of the enemy so the moment they spawn they already get hit. For example the Death Spiral, Hellfire, pretty much anything that leaves the screen will hit the enemies off screen. This also includes weapons like the Lightning Ring or the Thunder Loop because they hit the enemies wherever they are so they don't care about how far the enemies are away. I will not spoiler how every single weapon works and to which category they belong to but I recommend that you just check them out and give every weapon a chance and try to analyze how you should use them, in what cases you should use which weapons and especially certain combinations. Like for example Garlic has no knockback on its own but it reduces the knockback resistance of enemies while the King Bible has exactly the same radius as the garlic so they make a perfect pair to keep you safe. Every single weapon and item in this game has a weight associated to them which simply means this is how likely they are to appear on a level up. The way the game does it is it just bunches them all up together, rolls a random number within that range and whatever it lands on is the weapon that you get. There are more mechanics to this like for example how much luck you have makes it more likely that you get weapons that you already own but all in all this is just to show you here are the likely weapons as well as the unlikely weapons and it shouldn't be underestimated that it can be quite difficult to get those with a lower number. A 50 can already be enough that you will never ever see this item or weapon in an entire run. Now to talk about which item you should use on which weapon, I again refer you to the wiki because the list is just ginormously long. In general, if you don't know what to pick, just take something that makes the most sense on most of the weapons that you have, instead of picking something that is only good for one singular weapon. But later on I will talk about the most powerful items in the game, so in case you're lost, don't worry about it. Another important thing to know is that every single weapon in this game has a limit to the amount that it can have on the screen at the same time. This is also per weapon, even if you would have the same weapon multiple times, it would apply individually. But let's say for example a weapon has an amount limit of 20 and it's on the floor lasts very long and you hit the 20 then this would mean that you would no longer spawn additional projectiles until the old ones have disappeared and while this doesn't matter for most of the weapons because if you have that as a problem then you're overpowered some of the weapons have very big issues like take for example king bible if you have too much amount then it leaves a gap in the circle around you or something like center water where if it's too long on the floor and you want to move around then it doesn't shoot down more center water because the limit is already reached and that means you can't move around since no more weapons will drop. Every single weapon applies knockback to the enemies but this knockback may be literally zero. This may sound a little bit weird but this causes a staggering effect where the enemies can't move if they are attacked too many times or you can call it stutter movement or whatever you wanna call it. This can be so extreme that not even the reapers can move anymore. And keep in mind that the reaper is knockback resistant and this also applies to for example the guardians that if you have a lot of layers of center water on the floor and they constantly get attacked then they slow down heavily and this allows you to get away from certain enemies that may be impossible to kill right now but you just slow them down and kill them. Now I'm dedicating an entire point to the best weapon in the game, garlic. Well the point is something else but I already mentioned this when I talked about the different types of weapons. Garlic is one of the best weapons in the game to get going early on since you can just mow through the enemies ignoring them entirely since you one shot them and you level up like crazy. This can be a difference of reaching level 8 at 3 minutes or reaching level 20 at 3 minutes and now you have way more powerful weapons. One downside is obviously that you'll be missing a weapon but you don't need that many weapons in this game to win. It's rather more important that you choose the right weapons and against what many people believe as I mentioned garlic reduces the knockback of all the enemies that it damages continuously so again and again meaning it's not entirely useless in the late game but to be fair most enemies will not even get close enough to get hit by it. Now let's talk about items and there is not that much to say as I already talked about there are items that you can pick up from the stages and you can have them as additional items so once you have already six you can get a seventh one eighth one and so on depending on how many are on the stage but what are the most powerful items in the game 
In general, by far the strongest one is Empty Tome, because the 40% cooldown reduction it provides is incredibly powerful. Next up we have the Duplicator, which gives up to 2 additional amount, that applies to pretty much almost all the weapons, there are a few exceptions, but even something like the Whip will get additional slashes, so it's still good for that. Then we have the Candelabrador, which provides a huge amount of bonus area, which just means you hit way more enemies and therefore get way more experience, because the faster you kill the enemies the faster they respawn and that means more experience and finally as the last one we have spinach now spinach gives 50% bonus damage but keep in mind that this is only on top of your other bonuses so the 50% is usually rather something closer to 20 to 40% and the final one I will mention is Torona which is somewhere before or after the duplicator depending on your build I will not go further into it because explaining that kind of spoils a lot about the game but if you can get your hands on that then this is definitely a must have. Maybe one that I should also talk about is the crown where you get 40% additional growth. Now if you don't have limit break unlocked yet then ignore this one okay. It doesn't help you enough that it would be justified to use it. But once you have limit break this actually becomes a core item in your build because you level up way more and that means you limit break more on your weapons. And while I talk about items, I should probably also mention that you don't have to evolve every single weapon. Some of the weapons, like for example garlic, are better left unevolved because you still get the effect, but the item that it requires to evolve it is horrible, the Pomerola. It used to be way worse than it is right now, but I still advise against it and you're better off just picking one of these items that I recommend here. And also on the flip side, just because you pick up the Empty Tome, since it's the most powerful item, doesn't mean you have to pick up the Magic Wand to evolve it into a holy wand. Now I will shortly cover the evolutions in the game and yet again check out the wiki for more information on them because it's a lot easier but you have all of them in front of you right now. Most of the evolutions can be done by just having the right item and picking up a chest that can evolve. As I explained prior which chests can evolve. But then there are also unions. Unions are in general all of the weapons that require another weapon and they combine with each other. And for example Firachi is an exception that also needs an item on top of that. Then you have two special weapons being the infinite corridor and the shroud, mostly because you only unlock the items after a special event in the game so you can't obtain them earlier. Then there is the only triple evolution in the game which is the bracelet, the bee bracelet and the tree bracelet. You just have to get them to level 6 and then pick up an evolution chest to upgrade them. I guess at that point I should also mention that Vandalier is the only evolution that has multiple level ups aside from the tree bracelet. And then there are gifts like the soul solution, it acts like an item and goes into the item row. And then you have the candy box as well as the super candy box, but I'll skip explaining that one because either you already know what it does or it would be a major spoiler. Now I will talk about the different kinds of enemies in this game and I will trash talk a weapon that is believed to be very good but it's actually harmful and can even be the reason that you lose without noticing it. Though one important point, this is just an evaluation so if you like the weapon you want to go for it, do it. The most important part is, have fun. So a majority of the enemies that you face in this game have a level scaling. The higher your level, the higher their HP and it's not a slight one. If you're level 2, then they have twice as much HP as they had when you were level 1. If you're level 10, then they have 10 times as much HP and so on. Now, if you reach a point where you have everything maxed out, it's logical that you don't want to level up anymore. Since the enemies grow in power, it's only the HP that grows, but it keeps going up while you don't increase the power anymore. Now this is talking about normal cases without limit break. And then there are enemies that just have a set HP amount. They are usually the ones that you face first on the stage or some harder ones later on. Notably the werewolf on the mad forest and the walking witches on the library. They have a set amount of HP so no matter what your level is they will always be powerful or I guess depending on how fast you level up way weaker than the rest of the enemies. And now to trash on a weapon this is about the pen Pentagram. The pentagram is known to be a weird weapon that can be a lot of fun but it erases experience as well as chests so you quickly want to level it up which you can do with the red gem that I explained earlier and just max it out immediately. However, is it actually beneficial? But pentagram on its own has a huge downside that once it clears all the enemies, the enemies spawn in one big chunk because the game goes in alert mode and says uh oh 
We fell below a threshold of enemies that I want to have on the stage. I have to spawn more than normal and it will spawn them all in at once. They push each other towards you and now you have a tough time dealing with them. Now the reason most people think Pentagram is powerful is because of the inflated damage numbers that it has, but Pentagram works differently than other weapons. Since it's meant to just erase enemies, you know, make them disappear, it always deals the max amount of damage to them. So if they have a total of 600 HP but only 1 HP left, then Pentagram will always deal 600 damage to them to guarantee that you always get the kill. Overkill obviously happens with all weapons in this game, but none are as extreme as Pentagram. Then there are some other quirks that involve the Stalker who has 650,000 HP multiplied with your level and only Pentagram can make him go away, so the damage is attributed to it, but it doesn't really actually deal the damage. But usually the reason why people go for Pentagram is because of Moon. Moon is the evolution and you use Crown to get there and the benefit of it is that Moon, once it blasts off, it gives you bonus experience and soaks up all the XP that is on the stage. While this sounds great, if you think back on how most of the enemies work, that they become stronger with the more levels that you have, you actually don't want that. You don't want a weapon that forces it on you. As I said, the only exception is when you go for limit break because you keep leveling up your weapons, but first you have to unlock that and second, most of the times you don't need that because you outgrow the enemies either way. Now to cover the four different boss types in this game. The first one is the one that just has a chance to drop a chest. I mentioned the bat earlier that is on Mad Forest with an evolution chest that only has a 30% chance to be dropped. Though, as I said, this is affected by luck, so if you have 100% bonus luck, then this goes up to 60%. Then you have the bosses, those are majority of the bosses that have a guaranteed chest drop. They have varying chances on basic chest, triple chest, penta chest, but again, luck affects this in a 1 to 1 ratio, so 100% doubles it, 200% triples it. Then you have bosses that can multi-evolve. There are those that can evolve 2 weapons at once, 3 weapons at once, and 5 weapons at once. And that is not a normal thing, so if you see a multi-evolve, that was just lucky that you picked up the right chest in the right moment, and that wouldn't have happened with all the the other chests that could be dropped there. And lastly we have bosses that are immune to knockback, to rosary, pentagram, moon damage, also immune to freezes except for the orologion. For whatever reason the freeze effect of the orologion always works, but these are the toughest enemies to deal with. For example the 25 minute boss on the library, all the guardians, all the major bosses that you can face that you have to take down to unlock something in the game or so. Those are the bosses that are immune to pretty much everything. Now I will talk about all the noteworthy stats in the game that don't explain them themselves and have some quirks to them. First of all we have the health upgrades and you need to know that all the health upgrades are multiplicative with whatever you have in this very moment. So let's say for example you have 100 HP right now and you get a hollow heart with 10% bonus then you go up to 110 HP. If you get another level in the hollow heart for another 10% you don't get 10 HP again but 11 instead. Or in other words it's just multiplicative and not additive. Also, the bonus HP that you get is received as empty HP, so while it goes up to 110, you still have 100 HP available and 10 is black, so you have to heal it up first before you can use it. Next up we have armor and the only thing I want to say about this is take it. Armor is incredibly good as a power up early on to survive. I'm not talking about the armor that you can get as an item in the game and rather about a power up. I frequently watch new streamers in Vampire Survivors and one thing I noticed is that they as well as the chat really dislike getting armor because it's kind of expensive but you highly underestimate how good it is to help you survive the spam waves that allow you to level up like crazy and all of a sudden you are super powerful and you just steamroll through the game. Then we have regeneration which was recently changed to instead of giving you the HP amount every second that it shows there, so one regeneration would be one HP, it instead multiplies the healing that you have in the game. So if you have plus one regeneration that means that healing is doubled, if you have plus two it's tripled and so on and that actually makes it incredibly powerful in some situations. If you combine it with zero band of healing it's in fact the by far best farming method, the endless farming method for gold, since it outscales everything that the game can provide. 
However, if you're just a beginner, then ignore regeneration, it doesn't really do a lot to you. And if you need the occasional chicken to survive, then you are more likely very soon dead. Then we have amount, and amount is not projectile amount, which the game tries to sell you, because projectile sounds like something that you shoot around, right? Well, wrong. Just take this as a mount, ignore the word projectile. It affects something like the whip that it does additional slashes, it affects something like the crimson shroud for additional explosions, then moon for example, the initial single targeted explosion that it does, they get bonus experience, and there are only a few exceptions where a mount has no effect on it, so for example something like pentagram, garlic, and Laurel as well as Clock Lancet, they have no difference if you take it, but for most of the other weapons you can actually see the change, while for some of them, like with Moon and Shroud, it happens in the background. The point being, a mount is incredibly good, but not what it sounds like. Then we have Curse, and you may be wondering why does everyone take Curse if you watch a run, because it just gives more health, then the enemies become faster, they also spawn more frequently and in bigger amounts. Well, the reason is that these enemies that spawn more early on are the weakest enemies in the game, so you just level up very quickly and you overpower them, and you get your build incredibly fast. Before Curse, you were usually maxed out at around 15 to 16 minutes, after curse you are already maxed out at 10 minutes and this is before all the strong enemies start spawning. Now to be fair, once you are maxed out you just made the game a lot harder on you but most people use limit break which allows you to get further stats into your weapon and that means you can just endlessly outscale the enemies until the very end of the game. Then we have luck and I just want to say I covered this like for 10 minutes or so in the first part that I made of this with tips, tricks and so on about vampire survivors. I will have this linked on the end screen element that you see at the very end of the video or you just search on the channel. But to keep it short, luck affects everything that you may think it affects and way more. Something like negative events in the game and chances and everything pretty much. And while luck is incredibly powerful in the game, it doesn't really help you win. And that's the reason why you never see someone pick the clover up. It's more like that everything will have a better outcome, but if you're not strong enough to kill the enemies, that won't change anything about that. And finally, Finally we have limit break versus character bonuses, if you got to limit break then you may have noticed that your weapons keep upgrading and this is important that the stats of the weapon itself change, not the character bonuses. Even when it reads might, this is just to help understand what gets affected but it's actually called power and what that refers to is the power of the weapon itself, so when it reads plus 1% might, it actually means the weapon got plus 1 bonus damage and this is multiplied with the might percent of your character. The reason why this is important is that it's multiplicative, not additive, so if you have 200% might, that means this plus 1 power is multiplied by 3 and your weapon deals 3 more damage. Now to the boss killing part, and I will only talk about two bosses because the rest you'll figure out yourself very quickly. The bone ball on the bone zone which unlocks the secret menu, there you can see which secret characters are available or tips on how to unlock them, as well as typing in the secret codes in the game, and the second one being the reaper. For the reaper I just made an updated guide so this will be linked in the pinned comment. For the bone ball I will also link a guide, however this has changed because I think you received like 10 times more HP or so and you have to slightly change the strategy. Now all in all, if you want to kill a major boss in the game, simply go for Corridor. Whenever it goes off and the colorful animation goes around, it halves the HP of all the enemies hit and that makes it a very efficient boss killer, trust me. The only other things that you need, especially for the Bone Ball, are weapons that clear the enemies since the Bone Ball will try to consume them to grow and if you kill them then it can't do that and then you can also add some weapons like Thousand Edge, Holy Wand or Heaven Sword which allow you to single target him out and just blow him up in a few seconds after you reached him. It's just important that you keep your distance, you don't get anywhere close to him and once you're strong enough you hit escape, you check out the map where he is, you walk there and he only travels from the left to the right side so you can just stand in the way and wait until he appears. Now we are on the finishing mile and we will talk about gold. In general I don't advise gold farming early on because once you have all the unlocks and characters it's so much easier, like we are talking millions per run. 
I have a bunch of gold farm guides on my channel that I will also link in the pinned comment. There's simply too much to cover, but there are pretty much two stages that you go through. The first one is usually with Queen Sigma, where you make an overnight farm and you farm several millions, like 40, 50 millions. And then you buy golden eggs, which you invest into Big Trouser, and once he's more powerful, which happens around 90% cooldown reduction, you switch over and use him. Now it's important to state that golden eggs were only added as a way for people to spend their gold, they are not meant to be balanced, they are just the final resort of things that you can do in this game if you just want to grind the living hell out of it and go absolutely bonkers. This is not needed to enjoy this game, nor is it needed to unlock anything, and you are also free to just ignore it. And lastly, I have some little tricks for you. Number one, how about you blade a doggy on Ilmolise with the Celestial Dusting? And I would advise to limit your weapons to only one with the Mindbender Relic. That will be a lot of fun for you. Or your game crashes, depending on what happens first. Number two, wall glitching. This may happen to you a couple of times that you are just way too fast or your game lags and suddenly you glitch through the walls. No, this is not a secret. The game simply can't keep up with what's going on right now. And you will walk through the walls and it's a lot of fun to explore the map. But keep in mind, if you try to enter back into the stage while you're not lagging enough or you lost speed for whatever reason, then you won't be able to get back and you're stuck outside of the stage. And we have all the secret codes in the game. One big warning that if you unlock certain things this way that are needed to progress through the game, then the game doesn't have a check that you actually finished it in person and you can't progress anymore. So I would highly advise to never ever use these unless you know that you will not play anymore. By going to the wiki, again a reminder, the reason why I constantly bring up the wiki is because there the information keeps getting updated while this video, the older it gets, the more outdated it becomes. And as a final one, I highly recommend limiting your weapons to only one and then you try to beat the game only with a single weapon and limit break. If you want to have an additional challenge, then go for Wicked Season as the first arcana. I have an entire series around that, if you want then just look it up on my channel. Where I try to do this with every single weapon and reaching the highest level possible so we get the most bonuses. And I had a huge blast doing this, so I expect that you will also have fun. I hope this video was helpful for you and if it was then please consider subscribing and giving it a like. I have a playlist with almost 350 videos on Vampire Survivors, so if you like the game, then there's probably a lot of content in there. But I also cover a lot of other games that might be interesting for you, and I hope that you will join my channel.